to get on with this. So it's nice to see there are a few people interested in affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing, blogging for a living. Blogging for an income. My name is Darren Zapsky, and I'm an affiliate marketer. I'm also an affiliate marketing manager. Um, a little bit about myself, um, how I got into this whole affiliate marketing thing. It was about 10 years ago I started doing some research into how to make money online. And um, so I discovered this whole thing about affiliate marketing. And it's, it, I gave it a shot about 10 years ago, and it didn't quite work out. What I did was I went and I built, uh, spent about two or three weeks, locked myself inside my house, and I built out a website. And I joined one of those. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Gorp.com. It's like an outdoor website. But I joined one of their affiliate programs, and it was kind of like a pay-per-click type of thing, where like if someone would click on your links, you'd make like 10 cents or 20 cents, maybe 50 cents tops. So I went ahead and I built out this website, then I go and I call all my friends and I'm sending out emails and I'm telling everybody, you know, go and click on these links so I can make money. I was very excited about this. And um, so, you know, they go through this whole process of clicking on links and by the end of the month I end up making like 97 cents. So it was a very just like frustrating experience. So I kind of gave up the affiliate marketing for a while and I just went into like actually just had to go get a job. So I, I ended up in this in a with a company going search engine optimization. From there I moved into page search strategies and management and then e-commerce management. And right now just a few weeks ago I actually landed a job as an affiliate marketing manager with a company down in North Carolina. So I always thought it was kind of interesting how just that one little thing that I did ten years ago, you know, you know, investigating affiliate marketing in my failed attempt turned into this whole major career for me. You know, now that I'm, I'm doing something that I really, really absolutely love to do, I feel very blessed for being able to do that. But going back to that first website that I built and how it didn't make me any money, um, what I did was I actually gave up on being an affiliate marketer for a while and I just moved into the Google AdSense. So there I was for a couple of years just making $100 here a month, $200 on a really good month with Google AdSense. And... Um, ran into a friend of mine and he was actually going some affiliate marketing and was making something like like sixty thousand dollars a year off of amazon.com affiliate affiliate program so i decided to give affiliate marketing another shot again you know i have this habit of locking myself you know in my house and building websites so i built another website in a matter of like three or four weeks and it just still was you know it was making me some money but it wasn't like it was maybe i was getting like that one sale a month or something like that i'll never forget the first sale I got was like, um, I think it was a sleeping bag that I had uh, promoted, and I ended up getting like a $16 commission off of that sleeping bag. And that's kind of like whenever I knew, okay, there's really something behind this, but how do I make it happen? So um, I used the old wash, rinse, repeat method and just thought, well, if I just repeat that product review, then maybe not. I'll just write a bunch of, uh, a ton more product reviews, I'll start making money. And it really still, you know, it wasn't happening. I was making a little bit of money, but not enough to really you know, justify the time that I was putting into it. So I started investigating more, and about this time WordPress started coming out. And a lot of affiliates were moving into WordPress, and I really couldn't figure out why, because at the time we didn't have, WordPress didn't have like the fancy themes, it wasn't very search engine friendly. But I, gave, I decided to give WordPress a shot, and um, when I converted my entire website over to WordPress, I lost all my traffic, probably, well, probably at least half of my traffic, I lost all my sales, I thought, no, this is, this is another disaster. Just this whole affiliate marketing thing is just nothing but a roller coaster ride for me. And then suddenly, about two months, maybe three months later, the sales started coming in, and it started coming in more. And then the more blog posts that I wrote, the more the sales started coming. Then I started just you know upgrading my web, my blog, my WordPress blog, and making sure that it's search engine friendly as possible. And um, today, I'm I'm doing pretty well with affiliate marketing. I'm not what is what is called a super affiliate. But um, I feel, like I said, very blessed to be able to have a passion like that as a hobby that I was able to turn into a, a career. And down the road, I hope to really turn my affiliate marketing into like a full-time job. But one of the reasons I decided to do this presentation was because last year at PodCamp, I, I sat through a lot of good sessions, but a lot of people were raising questions about how can you make income off of your blogging. And people just well, you can put AdSense on it and make $30, $40 a month off of it, at least pay your hosting bills and that sort of thing. So what I wanted to do was just give you guys an idea of anything, if nothing else, you can walk out of here knowing that if you're a blogger, if you want to get into affiliate marketing, it's not as difficult as you think it is, and you can make a realistic income off of it. There are, I know a lot of people who are making up in the five and $10,000 a month range just off of content websites. They do other things as well, like pay-per-click marketing and some data fees, but if, if, if you have a blog and you have some decent traffic to it, you have a lot of potential in this business of making money through affiliate marketing. 
So another thing, too, I don't want this to just be like me standing up here giving um, a presentation to, like, like as if I'm doing a proposal to a, a board member, a board group. So um, if you have any questions, just shout them out, and you know, maybe we can get some kind of conversation going. So what is affiliate marketing? So let me ask, first of all, just to get, my, get to know my audience, how many of you, do we have any affiliates in here? Anybody doing affiliate marketing? Any experiences that you'd like to share? Are any of you guys super affiliates, Spidey? No? Have you done, what have you done? Do you care to share that? Or? It's always blow up in dollars a month, so. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. It's my Netflix. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, so like I said, there's a lot of potential in it, and a super affiliate is actually somebody who, it, it's kind of like a subjective term, but a super affiliate is somebody who actually makes a living off of affiliate marketing, and believe me, there are a lot of them out there. So, like I said, you know, when you leave here, you're not going to be able to just jump up, go out there, and within three months be a super affiliate, but you are going to be able to, uh, you know, get get a good start. So, who doesn't know what affiliate marketing is? No, you don't know what affiliate marketing. Is? Okay, so just to put it in, this, in its simplest terms, there's a lot of complicated ways of explaining affiliate marketing, but to just to make it simple. Say this is my blog right here, Upscale Baby Blog, and I just wrote this product review of this stroller, okay? So here comes Miss Online Shopper, and she finds me in Google, lands at my blog, and she decides that she that she's searching for this stroller in Google. She lands at my blog and decides that she likes the review that I wrote on this stroller. Meanwhile, ahead of time, I've already signed up for the Amazon.com affiliate program. She goes ahead and likes this, this blog post enough that she wants to investigate it further. She clicks on the Amazon link that's on my website. I'm sorry, you guys probably can't even see that, but she lands at Amazon.com and decides to make the purchase. Amazon.com then credits my associate's account with a commission. And that's really, there's a lot of different types of affiliate marketing, but that's the kind of affiliate marketing that I do when I refer to it as like content affiliate marketing. It's the thing that's the most effective for me. And um, I'd say if you're a blogger, it's probably the kind of thing that you want to look at. So there are some you know, important steps to becoming an affiliate, specifically a content affiliate for the purpose of this presentation. Um, the first thing is you have to have a content website. And that website doesn't have to be a blog. It can be just a static website, just something that you know, you're uploading through FTP. But like I said, I think like a WordPress blog works best for this type of a situation. Um, you need to join an affiliate network. Then you need to sign up for a merchant program. Then you need to find products to advertise. And there's tons and tons of products out there that would pique your interest. And then you really need to just go out and create content. And when I say about creating content, I'm talking about writing product reviews on your blog about these, these different products. So as far as the content website, the website that you might want to create or the website that you might already have, so categories of bloggers, the popular affiliates are in, you know, come in a lot of different categories. Um, you have food bloggers, you have mom bloggers, outdoor travel, do it yourself, home and garden, pet bloggers, fashion bloggers, self-help, sports bloggers, and photography bloggers. So how many bloggers do we have in here? Anybody blogging actively? Let me just use photography blogging as an example. Um, if you're a photographer and you're out blogging about your experience, if you're not like writing blog posts about the particular cameras that you're using or camera equipment, you're probably really losing out on a, a good situation, a potentially money-making situation. Just for an example, I don't, I don't make a lot, of, I don't do a lot of uh, affiliate marketing with cameras, but I do a few here and there. Like I mostly focus on the little point-and-click cameras. But I just recently decided to put up a blog post. It was about a month ago. I did a product review on the Rebel, on a Canon Rebel camera. It's an $800 camera, okay? And I was, I was actually advertising that through the Amazon program. Which is only a four. Amazon only gives you a four percent payout on their electronics, which does kind of suck. But um, Amazon, there's a lot of other benefits to Amazon. So anyway, I put this product review up on my blog, and it was literally the next day, or maybe two days later, I ended up getting a conversion. So somebody actually found my web page in Google. They end up at Amazon.com. They buy that camera, and they, they spend something like twelve hundred dollars. I get a four percent commission off of it and make fifty bucks. I mean, that's not bad for you know fifteen or twenty minutes of work. So then, and I know that that actual um, blog page is actually going to keep converting for me down the road, and I'm actually going to build up on that. Also with sports bloggers, like if you're out there blogging, if you have a Pittsburgh Steelers blog and you're not like taking advantage, if you have some traffic, if you have people coming, visitors coming to your website, why not uh, join a, 
affiliate program like um, Football Fanatics and just you know use that opportunity to you know collect a little bit of income off of your blog. I think there's just a lot of opportunity. A lot of bloggers, I don't know why they don't want to monetize their blogs. Um, it's actually pretty easy to do, and actually once you start doing it and you start making some money, it does become very addictive. Yes. Quick question about the previous uh, slides. Uh, when you join the affiliate program, right. uh, doesn't it automatically you sign up for the merchant account with them, or is maybe well, what you're going to do is you're going to find the merchant account. You're going to go to like a, a network like Commission Junction or something like that, and you'll join the merchant account, and then you'll find the program within that merchant account. Oh, we'll get into that. Okay. And so here's your your popular affiliate networks. Commission Junction being one of the most popular networks. Um, there's a Google Affiliate Network. These are the networks that you're going to want to join. You're going to find a lot of merchant programs inside these networks. Um, Share Sales is a, pro is a network that I really like. There's just, uh, for some reason, I don't know why, but the programs that I join in Share Sale, I, I seem to convert very well off those programs. Link Share, I convert off of those that network once in a while. Avant Link is my favorite network because I'm an outdoor blogger. I blog about stuff like canoeing and camping and just you know going out and taking a hike or whatever. And actually, Avant Link has tons of merchants, good merchants like REI and Moose Jaw, those types of merchants that you really want to take a look at. And Avant Link also has a lot of tools inside their uh, network that will actually help you do deep linking and really help you you know learn a lot. They have like a lot of tutorials and blog posts and that sort of thing that. You know, they're going to help you work through your, you know, up your up your game, your affiliate marketing game. There's a Pepper Jam network, which I really, honestly, it's a popular network, but I really don't use Pepper Jam as much. And then also you have ClickBank and Epic Direct. And I wasn't even sure if I should include ClickBank and Epic Direct. ClickBank actually is like a lot of digital products. So if you're, say, a, a health blogger or you're, you're blogging about cooking or dieting and you want to find a good downloadable diet uh, document that you can like, sort of sell your visitors, or if you're looking for like recipes, ClickBank would be the network you would want to join just to get those um, downloadable documents. And you'll end up collecting, ClickBank actually has a good payout of about 40 to 50% on a lot of their products. Um, Epic Direct, that's another one I really don't mess with very much, but I thought I should mention it because it is popular, and a lot of affiliates take advantage of it. I don't know if you guys have heard of rebilling, but it's one of those kind of things where like if I send for a product, like skincare products won't happen to be a big one. I sent for skincare a free sample of a skincare product, and then what they do is like, they want to collect my credit card information for shipping purposes. And this product is supposed to be it's a it's a free product, but what they do then is and I'm not saying that Epic Direct is like responsible for this, but there are some affiliates, um, some merchants out there who do this. They'll rebill your credit card and send you know without your knowledge of it, or or maybe they'll send you another product, a sample that you didn't order, but they charge your credit card for it. So those happens that happens to be a you know something that I'm really not too interested in doing, but a lot of affiliates do make them a lot of money off of that type of a program. But I would suggest anybody here doing like outdoor blogging, blog about canoeing or camping or anything. I some of you guys you said you blog. What do you blog about? Do you care to share that? Do you guys? Know? Yeah. I'm a photographer. Really? I'm a blog. Okay. So are, are you involved in any kind of? I definitely, if I were you, I'd get on like Amazon and definitely sign up for the program. Because, like I said, with that Canon Rebel, I mean, I, I made some money off that, and I know that they're, and I don't know anything about cameras. I really don't. I actually outsourced my uh, my um, product review that I wrote. I went to a website called Text Broker, and I had them write it for me. So, I, I mean, I don't know, but there I am, like, writing these product reviews, and, you know, some people might have a problem with that, but, you know, it's, I don't know. But anyway, I would, I would definitely recommend you, you look into it, because there are cameras. I think Amazon sells cameras in, like, the $5,000 range. So here's Commission Junction. This is like a look at inside of Commission Junction. You sign up, you were asking about the network. So um, you sign up for the Commission Junction network, and this is what you're going to see when you get inside of Commission Junction. And there's about 3,000 different merchants within Commission Junction. And sometimes it can be hard to decide which merchant you want to work with. But say you're a, you're a fashion blogger. I don't know, you might want to work with like Joseph A. Bank. You know, um, there's a lot of information. There's like uh, information that I'm not really going to get into a whole lot of it, but like your seven, your seven day and your three month EPC, like this column right here, for Joseph A. Bank, you see the seven day EPC is thirty three dollars and seventy eight cents. That means for every hundred clicks, you're going to make thirty three dollars and seventy eight cents. Not true. As you're starting out as an affiliate marketer, don't expect to see that kind of stuff. That kind of 
those numbers are actually like if you're doing everything right and the plans, planets are aligned perfectly and everything's going great for you, then you will see those kinds of numbers. The green bar in Commission Junction, um, you've got the different stages of green. The higher, the, the more green bars you have, the, um, the better performing, the, the more earnings you can make off of that particular program. And then this column over here is just sort of like a quick detail of the, pro of the, of, um, the payout of the program. Like Joseph A. Bank, they're, um, they're paying 8% on a sale. And that's actually kind of low, too. I'm managing a couple programs that are paying in 20 and 25% range, so even 8% even is kind of low. Does the network skim a part of that off? Or? Yeah, well, no, what the network does is they actually skim a part off of the merchant. So, like, whatever the merchant sells, the network might, what network, network might charge them 2% of what they sell. So, that's how the network's making their money. See what I'm saying? Like, if it's, like, net, the network would charge Joseph A. Bank 2% of what the sell is. Okay, so and the merchant. Yes. And, and you, and what you, you work directly with the merchant, though? I do, yeah. I mean, what, what, once they, you hook, they hook you up. Right. Oh, I had another question. What if you, what if you weren't so much interested in advertising, but, but there was some product you were interested in, can you just go in there to get 25%? Commission is a discount off the, in effect. Oh, you mean like for yourself? Yeah, like you want to buy something for a couple hundred dollars and they, 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 could you just... Yeah, uh, actually a lot of people do that, but what they you see these, these merchants and the networks have caught on to that. Oh, okay. So if you are going to do that, what I'd recommend is you go to maybe somebody else's house and do it, because what they, they don't track, when you uh, put, they just like, they like track it to your mailing address and then your IP address and your credit card account and that sort of thing. So as an, so as an affiliate, they might like to negate your commission off of it. So the best thing for you to do is actually have somebody else do that for you, you know, using a different ad mailing address and a different credit card. And actually, it brings up a good point. I know a lot of affiliates who they build affiliate websites and they, because they, they have a lot of family and friends who shop on Amazon.com. And if you're like one of those people who know a lot of people who take advantage of Amazon, I'd go ahead and build a website and just like you sort of try to coax people into going to Amazon and making their, their um, purchase through your website. Uh, You'll actually make some decent money that way. How long, how long is the window between when you do the clicking and make the purchase? How long is the window? Um, well, Amazon actually is kind of tough. Amazon is only 24 hours. So it's, it's called the cookie duration. But actually, there's like I, I manage a couple of programs right now that are in a day, like 180 days. So oh. I actually am an affiliate of, um, of a merchant called REI. And it's really interesting yeah. because REI sells like a lot of dry bags and like stuff for like canoeing and kayaking, and that sort of gear. And I like log into my account and I'll see I'll see a commission for like 40 or 50 bucks, and I like, you know, wonder where that came from. And it came from like six months ago. So that's it's like somebody actually clicked through my website onto the REI website, I'm sorry, uh, NRS website about six months ago, and I still end up getting the commission. Onto it. So that's actually pretty earned. So cookie duration is something you definitely want to sort of look at. It really sucks that Amazon only has that 24 hours, but Amazon does have a lot of things going on for itself. Like, for example, their brand. Uh, when people aren't afraid, if people are going to buy online, they're they're not afraid to buy off of Amazon.com. They have a lot of trust in Amazon, and also Amazon has a lot of often often enough has like the lowest price, and they often offer um, free shipping. So people with the net 24 hours are very easily ready to whip out that credit card. Well, and buy the personally, product. I kind of like REI. So you do? Yes. Yeah, uh, although I usually go to the store. Oh really? Yeah. But they uh, do. Is that someplace where you have to have your uh, a separate address or? With REI? Yeah, yeah, you probably might have to. And it really isn't the merchant; it's the network that REI belongs to. Oh, which I see. Is Abbott Link, and I think they're on Commission Junction. And the networks really do a, a pretty a pretty good job of monitoring that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, there's definitely... Does it also apply to the outlet or not? Yeah, yeah. In fact, if you're an affiliate, the outlet is a, a pretty good you know, way to leverage your affiliate marketing because they offer a lot of coupons and like uh, free shipping offers, clearance offers, and, and when consumers, you know, in this day and age, the way the, the economy is, people are always looking for like good coupons, like 20% off sleeping bags or a clearance sale on a tent. You can get a $200 tent for 100 bucks. People buy that stuff up. 
Okay. Right, right to the REI outlet. If you're an REI member at the end of the year, you you, you still get your um, group, um, what's it called? Uh, yeah, I know you're talking about. Your membership. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, I, I end up through REI. I sell a lot of those membership cards, twenty dollars memberships. So. Oh, you get commission on those also. Yes. Oh wow. So we're okay. We've decided that we want to um, we wanted the commission junction into the network. And we did some research, and we decided because, say, say hypothetically, we have this Pittsburgh Steelers blog, and we want to maybe find some products to sell on that blog, monetize the blog a little bit. And I decided to go into the lids.com website, or I'm sorry, lids.com affiliate program. You see in this column here, this is where you're going to find your links to your, to you know, all the different products that are available on lids.com. And what you're going to do is you're going to download these links. And this easily just like you know if you're not if you are familiar with WordPress, you can easily install these links into WordPress and then build your product review around these links. But it's, it actually works out pretty nice because like up there you'll see you get 20% off a half purchase and then you get a 15% off whenever you spend $60 or more. And then you have always have some nice creative banners of 15% off or whatever it might be or free shipping. So really, um, they do a good job of giving you a lot of tools to leverage. You know, like like things like discounts and clearance sales. And that sort of thing, and that's really what, like, like I said, like right now, a lot of people are shopping for bargains in this economy. So this, like, the 15% off, the coupons and every dates and that sort of thing, are working very well for affiliate marketers. Do you have to write a review in order to get people to? I mean, you don't have to write a no, review. No, that's just a strategy that I use that I, I think works very well. And like I said, there are a lot of different types of um, affiliate marketers. Like, there's your your pay per click marketers and data feed coupon markers, and I actually do a little bit of all that stuff, mm -hmm. but this is the one that works the best for me. So do you host the coupon, or does the, uh, some other site look like there's a coupon like that? Right. Do you host it, or does someone else control that? Well, I don't control it. I put it on my website. So it's a link, and whenever they right. change it, without your knowledge, it could be different. Uh, well, well, yes, it yeah. could be. A lot of times they'll send you emails if this link has expired, but you know, a lot of times they're ongoing as well, so they'll just create one like 15% off. Or a free shipping coupon, and it might just be, you know, it might last two or three years, so you know, oh. you don't really have to worry about it. But now, when you start getting into seasonal stuff like Christmas shopping oh, and right. that kind of stuff, then you do, you do got to pay attention to what's going on. Will you also be talking about how to entice people to become your affiliates? Like, if I have a good product to sell, I uh, can I just uh, stop my own affiliate network? You know, have other websites to promote my um, own product? Yeah, you can, and actually, uh, when I showed you the networks, ClickBank is one of those networks where you can do that. Mm -hmm. But that's all, that's really for like digital products, like if you have a downloadable book right, right. or something like that. But there is there are actually there's some software out there, and I might have to look look it up for you after um, this presentation if you want me to. Mm -hmm. But there it's it actually is really easy to start your own affiliate program if you're a merchant or if you have you yeah. know a product that you want to get out there. A good place to sell is ClickBank, right? Well, if it's if it's a digital product. If it's something that's downloadable, if it's in like book form or a PDF form or something like that, you would want to go to ClickBank. ClickBank's actually, that's what ClickBank is all about. That's what their motto is. So now we've reached a point, okay, where you got to, you need to create your content for this website. Or I'm sorry, for this product review, going back to product reviews. One thing you have to do is you have to really remember your original intent. One mistake that affiliates make, and I've actually made this mistake as well, um, you start getting, you start writing content, you have a nice blog, you start writing content, and you notice that it's converting, and then actually you sort of get caught up in writing product reviews because you get greedy, and, um, and eventually Google catches up with you, and it's called what is a thin affiliate website, and um, when Google decides you have a thin affiliate website, you're kicked out of the rankings for a while, or at least like pushed down in the rankings. And just a little story what happened to me last Christmas, Actually, it was last holiday shopping season around November. I started a new website, and I just started advertising stuff like kitchenware and just things around the house. And it was all Amazon products, and I started converting very well. I was like instantly like making like two hundred dollars a month off of this website, which doesn't very happen very often. Within a few days of making two hundred dollars, you know, off of a website. But um, what happened was I got greedy and I lost focus of what I was doing. And instead of writing with intent, I actually just started like copy and pasting these. You know, really ridiculous uh, 
you know, product descriptions, and I'd put a link in, an affiliate link in there, and I, I ended up in like maybe two weeks or three weeks, I created like about 90 product reviews. Google saw that and just like killed me instantly, um, so I lost a lot of my, you know, potential with that website. So, so then what I had to do was I had to go back to Google and, and you have to submit a, like a uh, re-inclusion form or something like that. I had to write Google that I was like a bad boy and I was sorry and I wouldn't wouldn't do it again. <laughs> well, I did. Did they make you write it a hundred times on the chalkboard? Yeah. You put affiliate links to it. <laughs> Sorry? Did you add affiliate links to it? <laughs> <laughs> but another thing is that you need to you, you need to re uh, remember to just write unique content. Because even if you're going out and you're like copy and pasting content and then rewriting it, Google does a pretty good jo job now of seeing right through that. And that's exactly, you see the panda bear kicking the span. There was a recent Google update called Google Panda. And um, that, that panda update is actually, it's not a penalty, but it's just an update to the algorithm. If your website is deems spammy in any way, in a sense if your content is duplicate content or if it just isn't useful, Google also then will kick you out of the rankings for a while. So you really always just gotta remember to just write with original intent and just just always write for your audience. And don't get don't get carried away with making money and don't become obsessed with it. Um, going to writing product reviews. This is just like a, a step that I use, or a strategy that I use to write my product reviews. Um, one thing is you have to write unique content as we went over, and you always have to use SEO best practices, so um, if you're not familiar with even the basics of search engine optimization, that's probably something you might want to familiarize yourself with, but it's really not that difficult. You just gotta make sure you have the right title tags and meta, and, or I'm sorry, description and keyword tags, and then sprinkle your your keyword phrase in throughout your, your article a little bit. But if you don't use uh, good key, I'm sorry, good search engine practices, you're probably not gonna see much results. And again, talking about search engine best practices, search engine optimization best practices, you don't always wanna talk, like try to target keywords like George Foreman Grill. That's a very competitive keyword. You're probably as hard as you try, and you're, you're never gonna rank in Google well for that search term. So what you would want to try to do is get a little bit creative, and they call it like um, going after the long tail keyword. You'd want to maybe try to target something like George Foreman Grill Review 2011, or George Foreman Grill um, Coupon Offer, or something like that. That is actually much easier to rank for than just for George Foreman Grill, and um, you'll you'll get enough traffic, and that you'll actually make conversions off that. Especially if you go for like a coupon offer, or if you target like a phrase like a rebate. People are going to really jump on that because that's actually you know what people are looking for. Um, always use images or video. I, you know, whenever I have the chance, I, I always uh, research YouTube to try to find a decent video, like a product review, something that would supplement my product review. And I always try, always try to use a nice image. I almost always take them from straight from Amazon. I mean, Amazon's not going to care because that image actually probably came from the manufacturer anyway. And I don't always lay my my product reviews out this way. Sometimes I'll like actually make a larger image, like the, the grill might be like 500 pixels. I'll put it at the very top of the article, and then maybe just um, put my affiliate link right, link right underneath the uh, the picture, and that seems to work very well too. But this, you know, like the way you lay out your um, product review, it's actually it's it's up to you. And I would suggest trying different things. And here's something that is very key to writing your product reviews, and it took me a while to figure this out. But um, you've got to focus on why, why they should buy the product and not necessarily focus on the great features of the product when, when you're writing your product review. It's really easy to say, okay, the George Foreman grill, it has um, you know, an eight-foot cord, and it, it's dishwasher shape and shockproof, and uh, maybe it has, a, it's, it has an automatic shutoff on it. But really, honestly, when the consumer arrives at your website, if they're ready to purchase this product, they already know all that stuff. They, they don't want to hear it again. They've either researched this product before, they've talked to a friend, so they're not interested in you know, those kinds of features about the product. What you want to do is you want to focus on like what I did in the second paragraph. So for the best price on a George Foreman grill, I always try to do something like that, like write some kind of a grabber statement, the best price on the George Foreman grill. Um, if, say, you're, you want to buy the George Foreman grill and I'm offering it to you for like 50 bucks, but she says, I got the best price on it, plus I can give you a 10% discount and free shipping, you're obviously going to pay attention to her, you know, over my offer. So um, you really need to focus on on like the, the reason why they should buy the product instead of like the main features of the product. And um, then you need to have a decent call to action. And I always like to write a paragraph, and then I usually put the affiliate link in there, like I have highlighted in blue. 
and then they put a buy now button in there, and that's not something that's absolutely necessary. That's something that I do. I've never seen any other affiliates do it, but um, there, they did some research about a year ago, and I don't know who did the research, some pay-per-click um, firm, did some research about like what's the best call to action type of button that you could use, and it really came down to like this a really simple buy now button, like it's red with white text. Yes? Okay, going back to layout for a minute, um, okay. do you keep your layouts consistent on each website? Yeah, I pretty much do, especially with blog press, or I'm sorry, WordPress, it's pretty easy to do that. But like I said, I do I do shift things around a lot as far as like the review goes. Like I'll, yeah. I'll try different things with the review. Well, yeah, but once you find, say, say for a camping reviews that you're doing, right? Uh, you find a layout that seems to be working better than the other ones, do you then make stay with that layout? Yeah, that, for the most part, yeah. Once you find a good thing, you don't want to ruin it. And that's part. That's that's probably part of the, um, you know, the big picture of affiliate marketing is you could have the greatest product and find the great, the greatest offer, but if you don't have a good landing page, um, you're probably not going to sell anything, or you won't sell much. I've seen some bad landing pages, and um, you know, when you scroll all the way all the way to the bottom of the page before you'll find the buy now button or the or the buy now link, and by the time you get to the bottom of the landing page, that like, you've totally forgotten what you're even looking for. So just some affiliate research tools that you guys you know probably should be aware of. Um, one thing that you have to do is you have to make sure you're focused on product research. Um, and a good way to research products is by going to Amazon bestsellers. This is by no means high tech. I mean, there's like a lot of free tools out there you can use to get some good uh, research. So you go to Amazon bestsellers, go to a category, and just or I'm sorry, go to an Amazon category and look up bestsellers. And um, there's a couple things you need to know about the bestsellers, especially since Amazon only pays 4%. Um, even though it's a bestseller, if it's a product that's only in the $9 or $10 range or $20, you know, you really might want to, I don't want to say avoid it, but you got to understand that if you do, you know, write a complete blog post on that $10 product, you're not going to make much money off of it. You really want to try to focus on, if you want to make money on those products that are a little bit higher end, $50, $100 type products. Google Insights, if you guys have ever heard of Google Insights, it's a pretty interesting tool. Um, if you just get Google Google Insights, you'll end up at their, their web page. And it, what it does is it allow you, allows you to do comparisons of different types of products. And it not only gives you like the, the demand volume of those products, but it actually also um, gives you like what times of year those products are really in demand. So it allows you to focus harder like during certain times of the year. And especially if you're using pay-per-click marketing, that is a very valuable tool eBay Pulse, um, I've heard a lot of people talking about eBay Pulse. Honestly, I've never used it. I just, I hear people talking about it. Um, thought I'd, you know, just give that to you guys. Then you're gonna really need to focus hard on your keyword research. Actually, you're gonna go back to the um, AdWords keyword research tool, which is free. Um, keyword discovery tool and word tracker, they both do good jobs for keyword research, but they're not free. And I'll tell you right now, um, there isn't anything out there as an affiliate that you need to pay for, other than maybe your hosting. You're going to see a lot of a lot of tools out there for affiliates, you know, like uh, especially like a lot of newsletters where don't fall for it. Um, people are going to say, "Well, learn how to be an affiliate marketer. Learn how to make a thousand dollars a month with this thirty-nine ninety-five newsletter." Don't don't buy it. Don't fall for it. There's so much free information out there, and so many tools out there, free tools. You don't need to spend any money for your you know your tools or your you know your research um, or informational products. Um, then you got your competitive research. You're going to use your search engines to find out how many people are actually, how other affiliates are trying to promote that blog. I'm sorry, that product. Um, you got your AdWords keyword research tool again. Um, then you got Link Diagno Diagnosis. It's a tool that I really like. It's not really an affiliate marketer's tool, but it's really like a search engine optimization research tool. So, you know, if you have, if you know there's an affiliate marketer out there who's competing with you online, you can go to his website with the Link Diagnosis tool. And you can you can find out how he's doing his search engine optimization and how many people were linking to him, and you can actually um, use that to your advantage. What's the website for this? The link diagnosis. Dot com. Yeah. And then there's SEM Rush, which pretty much does the same thing. It it, it actually is more, much more robust than Link Diagnosis. I don't use it because it just seems to like take over my entire computer whenever I <laughs> use it, so I, I stay away from it. So affiliate campaign optimization. 
of course, obviously, we're going to want to use search engine optimization because that's going to be your biggest um, ally in affiliate marketing. Email marketing, once you start getting good at it and you start building up an audience, you really want to start building up like a marketing list as well, because um, or a newsletter list, because a lot of affiliates move on to you know that you know search engines after a while kind of dry up or they kind of like they have their limitations. But when you can get into the email marketing, that's whenever people really start making the money. Um, Aweber is a good one. I use Aweber. That is a, that actually is the one paid tool that I use. Eye contact I hear is pretty good. I haven't used it. And then there's Glock. So if you're a WordPress blogger. Glock is a free tool. Um, it's a plugin. It's a little bit clumsy, but you know, for being free, it's not too bad. But by email marketing, are you talking about marketing your site, or are you talking about you marketing other people? No, what I'm what I'm talking about is building just like a a marketing list, like an email list. People land at your website, and then they sign up for your newsletter, perhaps, and then maybe once a month or every two or three months, you'll send out a newsletter of um, you know whatever you want to you know different product promotions and that sort of thing. Um, outsourcing, you got Elance. Um, I haven't used Elance yet, but I'm about to because I have actually um, three or four websites that I need to rebuild, and I don't have time to do it, so I might just outsource it to Elance. Uh, Textbroker.com. It's a place you can go. It's, it's. I use it a lot actually for writing articles because you guys who are blogging, you you know that writing articles after a while gets you kind of get writer's block, especially when you're doing so many product reviews. There's only so many things you can say. So. Uh, a service like textbroker.com for like four or five dollars, you can send your article over to Textbroker and they'll write it for you. Um, textbroker.com has some limitations where the people are just sort of have limited knowledge. So if you want a really good, you know, authentic written article, it really does do some good to find some writers. That can, and the way you can do that is they go to forums and stuff like that. There's always a writer out there who's willing to um, make a few bucks and they'll spend a lot more for an article written by a writer than you will an article written by Textbroker. But a text broker article is going to be just nothing but kind of regurgitated information. If you get a writer out there who's knowledgeable, you might end up spending $10, $15 for him to write that article. But he's also probably going to include images and possibly even video. And it's going to be very unique content that you're not going to get anywhere else. I actually have a guy up in Canada right now. He's canoeing for seven days up in Canada, and he's, he's writing me an article about it. There's no way I'm ever going to get to Canada and go canoeing for seven days. So I'll be glad to give him the $15 to write me an article. For my website. Then again, you know, you can optimize your, your affiliate campaign with social media, Twitter, Facebook, although I think there's a lot of, I really don't use Facebook that much or Twitter for, for affiliate marketing because there's nothing more annoying when somebody tweets you with an affiliate link. Um, I think Facebook actually might crack down on like um, people who are like sending out a lot of affiliate links. I should probably try to use Facebook a little bit more often, but I don't. And then there's also podcasting and video. A lot of affiliates are turning to podcasting. I, I see affiliates, they'll start podcasting and they'll say how great it works, but then they, they'll stop podcasting for three or four months and then they start podcasting again. And my theory is on it, if it's so great, if it's such a good marketing tool, why did they quit podcasting in the first place? So I haven't gotten into the podcasting yet. The video I am starting to do. Using YouTube video, it's really easy to shoot a product review with your video camera and YouTube. And some WordPress knowledge for you, um, some popular WordPress themes. Um, thesis theme is a popular WordPress theme that I really like. Um, it's a little bit yeah. it's a little bit advanced, but it does have a lot of great search engine features in it, search engine optimization features and a lot of other things. It's really a good theme, customizable theme. And that's another thing, it's not really a theme, it's more like a framework. So you do need to go in and customize it yourself. But you can pick um, pieces of theme up for about eighty dollars for a license, well, which happens to be one more tool that I pay for. But um, for an eighty dollar license, lifetime license, you can build out as many websites as you want with pieces of theme. East Store is a good one. El actually, it's Elegant Themes. Elegant Themes cost. There's a thirty dollar license per year, and you end up getting like thirty or forty different themes. And East Store is one of those themes. So if you'd want to build a, a website that is actually um, more like an e-commerce store. That's a good uh, choice in themes. <laughs> then there's a Genesis framework, which is some, kind of like thesis theme. Um, it's just not your basic theme. It's, it's more of a, a framework that you do need to go in and customize. But those are the, those are some of the tools that affiliates are, you know, the best affiliates, the top affiliates are using right now to generate income. And if you don't want to do that, you can just stay with your old, you know, the uh, 
theme that you have for your WordPress file. Well. And then some popular plugins. OpenHook, that goes along with thesis theme. If you're not a programmer, you can just do some copy and pasting code into OpenHook. Um, there's some Google XML sitemaps for you SEO people out there. You always got to let Google know how much of your how much uh, content you have out there. And you can do that with the XML sitemap. And once you get 40, you know, or let's say like 70 or 80 blog posts, Google might not be able to crawl all those blog posts. So with the XML sitemap, you know, you're actually sending those blog post files straight to Google. Pretty neat link light, uh, cloak pig. Those are tools you're going to need to like cloak your links, which I'm not going to go a lot into that. But basically what you do is you want to, there, there are some uh, affiliates out there who want to steal your products, steal your commissions, they'll steal your affiliate ID right out of the link, your affiliate link. So you want to go ahead and try to and cloak those links so that they can't actually see your affiliate ID. So pretty link light and cloak link and CSV pig are good products. And then there's the all-in-one SEO pack. Um, again, getting back to how important search engine optimization is. If you're not using a, a theme like thesis theme, which has all built-in search engine optimization um, functions into it, you'll want to go ahead and download something like the all-in-one SEO pack. Very effective, and, and you don't have, I mean, there's plenty, there's probably three or four really good SEO um, plugins out there. That's just one that I chose. And that's really it. Um, I'm Darren Zapsky, if you want to get me on Twitter. Um, if you want to send me an email, I'm at zapsky.com. The company that I work for is MGECOM. They're based out of North Carolina. I'm an affiliate manager for that company, and these are some of the programs that I manage. And um, just a couple of good resources for you. If you'd like to listen to podcasts, um, Geekcast FM, Affiliate Summit Forum, and A Best Web are some really uh, great resources for you to learn more about affiliate marketing. And that's pretty much it. So I just want to thank you guys for sitting through my presentation. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. So what are you saying about cloaking? Yeah, that, that actually can get kind of, it's a little bit technical, but what would happen is if somebody goes to your website and they, they can hover over your link yeah. and see what your affiliate IDs are and yeah. associated with your affiliate account. And what they'll do is, and I don't know how they do it, they're, they're just pretty savvy marketers and thieves. And what they'll do is they'll be able to take that information when it's manipulated into like their own commission. So in other words, they're stealing your commissions off of you. So we'll clone your site and replace your, your part with their affiliate link or Good. Yeah. So they can't actually change change something so that you, you, they can't, they, they can, they can't take control of your affiliate. No, 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 no. They can't take control they, of your they site. They can just basically make it clone your site. And well, they actually, a lot, a lot, how, they how, all, how does cloaking it? Because they can't see your affiliate link at that point. So if they're going to put the wrong one in, what do they kill your affiliate link? Well, they do because they'll get your affiliate ID and it's, it's called Parasiteware. And basically what it does is it just it crawls through your website and it'll collect any affiliate information that it possibly can. And like I said, I'm not like a... Oh, a I see. Like so it's, it's a bot that's going through. Right. It's, it's like when you cloaking your email address. Right. Uh, I see. So, and then they'll just, it's, they're, they're spammers, they're, um, you know, the phishing... So yeah, cloaking. So it's, yeah, it's just more cloaking it so they don't detect it. It's not cloaking it so they can't figure out what it is. Right. What's that Random example. Um, I found it, I was looking up uh, like promo codes for some online software that I wanted to get, and um, I found a place that their whole affiliate marketing, I guess, model is: if you buy um, through their affiliate links, they'll share half of their commission with you, so they get more people to buy through their links, and you kind of get a little. Right. Well, right. Yeah. That was, that was kind of a fun Yeah. Bonus. And that actually, <laughs> it actually is, but it's actually, um, it's kind of a pain too, because this company right here, I say.com, mm -hmm. yeah. I manage this program. Have you heard of it? No. They do like um, surveys and that sort of thing. A lot of people just go online to, to fill out surveys and then they can win products and get a chance to win a thousand dollars and that sort of thing. But what's happening is like, I say is really being taken to the cleaners because there's like all these incentive sites out there. I say wants people to want, they want people to go go to their website and fill out actual surveys, but instead you have this like incentive affiliate out there who is sharing his his commission with somebody like you. Right. So then you could just go out there and say to all your friends, hey, just go to I say and just uh, 
fill out a bunch of, you know, these surveys. So actually people that are interested exactly. in filling out the exactly. surveys. Exactly, they're just doing it just to collect the money, and then you're promoting it because you're getting an incentive from it. So um, it does kind of become a pain. That, that's not exactly fair. I like the part where I get a kickback on something where I'm actually going to use it, but, right. you know, yeah. something like that is a little, but, um, little black hat. What, what is your primary method for driving traffic to your affiliate uh, product review website? <coughs> so you primarily do you click on that, or are you just doing um, hoping for organic search results based on content? Right now, um, I do a lot, mostly, I'm probably like 90% organic. But then I do also pay-per-click, and I usually do that around the Christmas holiday shopping season. Okay. Um, and one thing, one reason why I stay away from pay-per-click because it's getting so difficult now. Google's either your best friend or your worst enemy in this industry, and you—I don't know if you you know about the Google slap and all that. Yeah. But I mean, I've been slapped before, and that's not a fun thing. The only the only way I got out of the Google slap was somebody actually hacked my affiliate, my AdWords account, and then I'm spending like $180,000 in one day. And Google knew that wasn't me. So um, Google canceled that account and they gave me a new account. But if it wasn't for that, I would have never got around the Google slap. So now I'm kind of I'm kind of at the point now where I'm trying to figure out how to use Google, or I'm sorry, how to use AdWords without getting slapped. And I think a key to it might be like um, building like some sort of a comparative shopping site, or maybe like there are some plugins you can get. Like if you do a product review, you can you can find there are plugins out there where you can actually do like some comparative shopping listings underneath your product review. Right. And Google's thing is they don't want just a bridge page, you know, like which would be your affiliate web web page. They actually want to have like a page, web page that has multiple links on it to different different resources for that product. So, so, so you're not so your web pages aren't actually just all product reviews. No, no, no. That's another thing. Um, yeah. I mean, I have websites like I go going back to like your original intent. Like I would say, try to do a mix of like maybe thirty percent at the most of product reviews. Don't get lost in trying to, you know, do all product reviews because then Google might see you as a thin affiliate site and just kick. I actually do a lot of just regular content. Like I told you about the guy up in Canada. He's he's canoeing for seven days in Canada. Um, he's going to write me a pro or I'm sorry, a, a trip report. So those are like a lot of the things that I focus on, okay. rather than just a product review. And it, I think it just does a, you know, it keeps you safe, so you don't look like such a, you know, nothing but a spammy website. So so you might do like. Bad trip reports, or you know, just regular content about outdoors being outdoorsy, and then through two product places right. sitting there right. just filling. Okay. Right. And I have to admit that, like over, like I haven't been doing as much canoeing as I right. like to, but lately I've been getting a little bit carried away. So I think I'm pushing my luck a little bit with the product reviews. So I need to get about, I, I think probably about six or eight trip reports up there. On my one of my blogs. You could justify it. It's the end of the summer. This is what we yeah. Do. You know, all the products now that I use this summer. So let's say you had a movie blog. Okay. And clearly you can't promote the movie, but I mean, like besides the typical things like Netflix, right? What other affiliates would you try and get? Um, actually, it's kind of interesting because like I I have on my blog Zapsy.com. I like watching stuff about the Civil War and that kind of stuff, so I, I actually wrote a few blog posts about Ken Burns, his documentaries, and I've actually had people, and I put some affiliate links up just for the heck of it, just to see what would happen, and I actually started making sales through, I never really expected it, but I started making sales, people were like going straight to Amazon and doing like the Amazon um, on demand downloads and buying CDs and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then another website that I built, it's really in bad shape, I, just, I built it, but it's, it, it needs work, I won't share it with you guys. It's just sitting there just waiting. It's on a back burner right now. But the movie Good, Bad, and the Ugly, I don't know if you guys know about that, but I'm a huge fan of that movie. So I built, <laughs> I built an entire website on that movie, and um, I'm trying to promote that, that DVD on Amazon as well, which is that one hasn't converted yet. But, um, so those are just some ideas for you. I'm sure if you looked around, you'd probably find. Well, because like I, I, mean, I, I do a web comic, and I know like the guys from Penny Arcade had that issue where a lot of their affiliate, the affiliate, affiliate that I get, a lot of the people that they advertise for are video games, and they do very specific video games, so that it's like they're not selling out almost and just putting up anything. Right. So it's like I don't know if it's something that I mean I I pick very specific things. But like, I'm I kind of pick at everything technology related, so it's not like I can't make fun of a product that's out and then you know put up a 
Right, right. You've got to be power. careful. Mm-hmm. I understand. So, yeah. But I mean, if you look around enough, I'm sure you can help. Like, I would suggest, if nothing else, just, you know, if you don't know if you really want to go into affiliate marketing, maybe just joining some of those mm-hmm. um, networks that I suggested and just looking around. There's no harm in that. And I would, you know, join three or four of them. Okay. So that's it. Unless other people have questions. I guess one other question is for one product then you only have one um, one affiliate with it, right? So like you wouldn't have like Amazon and no. X and Y. Actually and I do do that. I do. Like if I find like three or four products that are really competitive in pricing and maybe like they have strong brands like CSN stores, Amazon and maybe Macy's or somebody like that, mm-hmm. I will give like three options. Like not just the Amazon link, but I'll try to like, you know, like do, I'll do, well, you should, for the best price on this product, buy it at Amazon, but free shipping here, or, you know, go to CSN stores. Well, when you click, when someone clicks on your site, and get, do they have to buy that product or any product from the site? Oh, they can buy any product, too. Any product yeah. from the site? Will that's a, well, that's one of the nice things about Amazon. People will go to Amazon, if you're just promoting a camera, and they go there, they might end up buying like like eight or ten different products. Okay, then I can sort of understand 24 hours Amazon. Yeah. yeah, and the 4% sort of makes up for itself at that point. Thank you for your time. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.